This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The opposite of a step acquisition is a step disposal. With step acquisitions, we went up from 10 to 80 percent or 40 to 80 percent. Now we're going to start going down. And really, this is just the reverse of the other. So there's not a huge amount more to learn if you just keep your head nice and calm. Two different scenarios. The first one that you can see in the course notes is very similar to the last one that we spoke about. The last one that we spoke about was something like 70 going up to 80%. We're now going to go the other way and go from 80 down to 70% or something like that. There's nothing new to learn here. There is no change in control. There is no disposal per se. So nothing happens. It's very similar, say, to the last transaction. This time, it's a little bit like being impoverished and having to get a lodger in. If you get a lodger in, your money goes up, your NCI will go up, there'll be a difference. Again, it's seen as a transaction between shareholders. So it has no impact, no impact on P&L, no impact on OCI, no impact on goodwill. It's simply a transaction where an adjustment is once again in the statement of changes in equity. So it's the mirror image of the last one that we looked at. So as it says in the notes here, this is a transaction again with the NCI or minority shareholders. NCI will go up this time. In my scenario, from 20 to 30%. Bad news. That's a credit. Cash will go up. Good news. That's a debit. The difference between them, again, will end up again being posted to reserves. That could be a debit or a credit. It just depends. And essentially, in one sense, it's almost to stop the balance sheet not balancing. So the amount that I actually receive, which will have been achieved through negotiation, will not be the same as the change in the NCI. The change in the NCI will be some kind of mathematical calculation. So exactly the same as last time. But the example that we're going to look at this time is just a little bit more complicated. So I'd recommend you pause the recording and again, have a think about example three and then I'll work through it with you. So we're looking at Betty and Penny. Betty, it said, used to have an investment of 100%. It then decided to welcome in an NCI, so it sold off 10%. So I did not lose control. I went from 100 to 90%. The NCI went from nothing to 10%. We're told that the actual consideration for this was 50. And we're also given some data which will help us to sort out the NCI at the moment. The assumption I've got down there is that it's full goodwill. Again, I sometimes think when I look at past questions that the, the calculations are not always consistent. So don't worry too much about that. But do worry very much if you suggest that the entry should go to PL or OCI. The big message you must get across is that there's an adjustment and it's going directly into equity. 
So we're going to have a look at this adjustment here in example three. Performer first. I need to know the proceeds of sale and I need to know the change in the NCI. And again, there'll be a difference. And that difference will be going to the statement of changes in equity. The proceeds we know are 50. Now the NCI is going from nothing to something, isn't it? So the NCI is going from zero to something else. And then, of course, this is one of those times when you look at the ceiling, you look at the floor and say, I don't know what to do. So keep calm and carry on. This is what I think I would do with that data. I know the carrying amount of the subsidiary would be the sum of its net assets and its goodwill. So I think the carrying amount of the subsidiary would be 400. That's what I would use, isn't it, if I was doing something like an impairment calculation. This NCI is getting 10% of that 400. So the, the NCI, the new NCI, will be 10% of 400, which is 10% of 400, which is 40. So from that scenario there, I'm going to say this number is 10% of 400. The 400 is the three. Let me get this the right way round. Yep, yeah, the 350 and the 50, that's 40. So the NCI has changed by 40, the difference is 10. Money came in, so debit cash or cash goes up. NCI goes up or credit NCI. Uh, what's the difference again? Well, we've got an extra, looks to be like a credit there. So reserves goes up in the statement of changes in equity. Again, it's not a gain or loss or anything like that. Remember, no one gets terribly excited about the um, statement of changes in equity, except the lawyers. Oh, and probably the FR examiner, but you've passed that anyway. So essentially, there's a situation where we went from um, 100% to 90%, very similar to the past example. Coming back to the notes, things get a bit more exciting in this situation here. Control to no control. So this could be from 80% to 20%, or it could be from 80% to 5%. Just made up a couple of numbers there. What's going to happen here is very similar to the situation when you had a step acquisition earlier. If you're going from 80 to 20 or 80 to 5 or something like that, then you're saying goodbye to the old investment, bye-bye, hello to some money, and hello to the new investment. Everything, particularly the new investment, measured at fair value. So let's keep that in our mind. I sometimes think about this working here. I sometimes think of it of the wedding speech. Because at the wedding speech, I never know which way round it is. But the father of one of them says, I've lost a daughter and gained a daughter or a son. I've lost a son, gained a son or a daughter, all sorts of whatever. 
But it's a bit like that, the wedding speech, isn't it? You've said goodbye to your beloved child and hello to the new person who's now entering your family with all their issues. So bye-bye to the old company, hello to the new one. This is just a standard profit on disposal calculation. Look inside that box, bye-bye. When you say bye-bye subsidiary, you're saying goodbye to the net assets, bye-bye. Goodbye to the goodwill, bye-bye. And goodbye to the NCI, bye-bye. So you sweep it all out, bye-bye. And what have you got instead? You've got instead, again, the money coming in. And you've also got your new baby investment. And that might be an associate. It might be, um, it might be a trade investment, whatever. Either way, it'll be measured at fair value. You'll be told what that figure is. So clearly, this working here, you have to learn. If you didn't learn the working, you will be absolutely sausaged. End of story. Where does the number at the bottom go? The number at the bottom goes, of course, to the profit and loss. So please pause the recording for a minute and have a read of the next example called Socks. In Socks, again, we are, and a good phrase for this is, we are crossing the control threshold. We cross the control threshold. When we cross the control threshold, effectively, you've perhaps seen that phrase up at the top of the page. When we cross the control threshold, we will have a profit or loss on the loss of control, and that number shall be in the P&L. In socks, we started out with 90, we decided to sell 50. Be careful with how you read the questions. So it's gone from 90% down to 40%. You've crossed the magic river. You no longer have control. You can no longer choose directors. Basically, you've got to sit there and shut up most of the time at board and general meetings. So we've got a loss of control. We're trying to calculate the group profit on sale. So as always, we'd start out by setting up our performer. So in a minute, I'll be looking for the proceeds of sale, the fair value of the 40% investment that I've retained, the fair value of the 40% that I've retained, less Goodbye to the subsidiary. Goodbye to its net assets. Bye-bye. Goodbye to its goodwill. Bye-bye. And goodwill, goodbye to its NCI. It's like that tearful moment, isn't it? If you've left home or been evicted now by your parents again, that tearful moment when they say bye-bye and wave goodbye as you set off on your journey into independent life. I'd better not get too emotional. We'll go back to the question. So what have we got here? We're first of all looking at the proceeds. So the proceeds of sale are 120. I'm also looking for the fair value of the 40% that I have retained. The fair value of the 40% is 96. You'll probably be saying, I bet it's harder than this in the exam. No, but if you don't know the formula, I say we, we have a problem. So proceeds are 120 and the fair value of the 40% is 96. That's the good news. The bad news, we say goodbye to the subsidiary. Goodbye. So I've got the subsidiaries 
Net Assets, 201. The subsidiaries, Goodwill, 38. Can we find the NCI? Yes, we can. The NCI, 53. 201, 38 and 53. That gives you 186 again. So I think that's finally a gain of 30, the profit and loss. So if it had said this was um, significant influence now, you'd have equity account for it. If it wasn't significant influence, you'd just continue to measure it at fair value, but you'd do what it said in the question. Either way, we've got a gain of 30 going into the profit and loss account. So there we are. There are step disposals. The key thing, isn't it, with both step acquisitions and step disposals, what we probably need is lots and lots of question practice.